Okay, suppose you're driving along the highway someday and you see a helicopter in the air and it's the color orange, you know immediately what that is. That's an air ambulance that's taking somebody to a hospital, from one hospital to another hospital, from an accident uh, location to a hospital. You know, it plays an important role, but it costs us a lot of money. And in particular, the guy who founded it, Dr. Chris Lamaza, has been embroiled in a bit of a lawsuit. Lawsuits going back and forth. So Frank Lees is here. He's the Ontario PC Infrastructure Critic, MPP for New Market Aurora. Frank, thanks for coming in. Good to be here. Uh, let's talk about Orange first, because it's an important role. We, uh, we spend about $150 million a year in Ontario on the air ambulance system. Is it a worthwhile system? Well, look, it's an important system. Uh, we rely on it, uh, especially people in northern Ontario. Uh, what is very concerning uh, is how reliable is it under the current structure and uh, uh, we've now gone through some two years of public hearings after the scandal uh, that uh, uh, it ended up in as a result of mismanagement and, uh, and it not only uh, financial mismanagement but, but quite frankly uh, a whole lot of structural problems uh, that resulted in putting people's lives at risk. Uh, so what, uh, what we need to do now rather than protect that structure it's my opinion that what we need to do is look at uh, what structure will make it effective and will properly serve the people of this province that's what we're pushing for through our public accounts committee unfortunately the government seems to uh, be taking the position that they want to hang on to this maza scheme if i can put it that way uh, rather than looking at what the right thing is to do to make uh, that ambulance, that air ambulance, uh, efficient and effective. Okay, so if that's the case, Frank, and, and I do want to talk about Mazza because that's, you know, a scandal, but it's also water under the bridge. You know, that's money that's been spent. We can't do anything about it. I'd like to recover some of it, quite frankly, as a taxpayer, as you would sure. probably think. But how do you fix what is currently established? It's an important institution, but how do you fix it, the structure? Well, I think the first step uh, that we need to take uh, is to say, let's step back and ask ourselves the question, what do we need to do to ensure that we have effective response time, uh, that the air ambulance, the, the, uh, the, the air ambulance side of it is properly managed? Uh, the fact of the matter is that the current uh, management at Orange just simply doesn't have the background, doesn't have the expertise uh, in the aircraft industry. Uh, the way it used to work is that the aircraft uh, was actually leased out uh, to private sector uh, who were in the aircraft business. They knew how to run helicopters. Uh, for many years, uh, Canadian helicopters uh, were responsible for ensuring that the helicopters were there, that, they were, that the pilots uh, were there, that they were uh, available when needed. Now, you see, it was Dr. Mazza's scheme to bring the entire helicopter operation in-house. He wanted to own helicopters. He wanted to be in the helicopter business notwithstanding the fact he had no experience there and now we've got a situation where quite frankly we've got people who don't have the experience who have the responsibility to manage an aircraft industry. You're suggesting privatizing then basically? I, I, I'm suggesting this. I think we need to get back to a structure that existed before Mazza where we had businesses who were in the business of managing aircraft again assuming that responsibility. They work under contract to the Ministry of Health. That's what we have to get back to. Rather than defending a system that quite frankly is not working and it continues to give us serious uh, challenges in terms of meeting calls, in terms of having crews available. Uh, just recently, a couple of weeks ago again, there were no helicopters available in Moosonee, for example, in Thunder Bay. Why? Because we didn't, have the, uh, we didn't have the pilots, we didn't have the paramedics to properly staff it. This is a specialized industry. You can't just wake up one day and say, I want to be in the air ambulance business. Well, Chris Mazza must have at well, some point, did. and he came up with this scheme, and he profited, he, uh, according to the most recent reports, I've got $9.3 million in public money over six years. Yeah, and that's just one aspect of it, uh, unfortunately. Uh, you know, every time we turn around, every time there's another audit, we find there's more and more money that's gone into this black hole. But the financial scandal is, is the least of our concerns. What's more important is that we have an ambulance service that's ready to respond. Whether it's inter-facility transfer or whether it's uh, an emergency uh, 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 call to an accident, uh, we need to know that the pilots are there, the paramedics are there, they're properly trained, and that they have the ability to respond. That's mm -hmm. on the operational side. 
I don't have the confidence that under the current structure, that's there today. Okay. Now, it still costs us money, though. Whether we go to a privatized system, will we reduce the costs if we move to a system that you're suggesting? Well, I believe we will. Uh, you see, right now, there, there, there's absolutely, there are no controls. You know, un, under a system that we had before, uh, if, in fact, the private operator did not deliver on time, uh, there were financial penalties. There were consequences to not uh, being there on time and not uh, uh, having crews ready to, to respond. Under the current system, all we do is pour money, more money into it, and we still don't have the effective service. So I'm convinced that we'll save money, we'll stop the bleeding, and we'll have accountability and proper oversight. And but, improved service. And improved service. And, and that also, you see, what it does presume is proper oversight on the part of the Ministry of Health. And that's where this government has failed miserably. This scandal took place under the watch of the current Minister of Health and under the current Premier. The fact of the matter is that, and the Auditor General, in his report, this is not my, my saying this, this is the Auditor General of Ontario, after an extensive review, confirmed that the main problem here was the lack of oversight on the part of the Ministry I of Health. I think Deb Matthews even said today that she hadn't even looked at the accounting. Well, records. there was a forensic audit that was done by the government. Uh, and, uh, you know, to our shock, she, she revealed in a scrum yesterday that she didn't even open the envelope. Uh, and and uh, when I challenged that today, uh, she backpedaled and said, well, I read the interim report. I didn't want to read the final report because I didn't want to interfere with an OPP investigation. Look, the minister is responsible for oversight. This was a scandal that was brewing under her watch for crying out loud. Surely, as a minister, she wants to know what is in that forensic audit. Not to do so, not to be interested in that shows, quite frankly, uh, she doesn't qualify for the title of Minister of Health. Frank, we'll leave it there. Thanks very Thank much you. for coming in Thank and explaining you. it to us. Pleasure. Frank, please. He's uh, Ontario PC infrastructure critic as well as MPP for New Market Aurora. Frank,